Welcome to the ultimate vegan game day spread. Today I'm going to not only be sharing with you not three, not five, but seven of my favorite vegan game day dishes, but I'm also gonna be sharing tips with you of how I prep everything very easily, even if it's last minute, because all of these recipes can be made together in under three hours. These are all recipes that will really wow a crowd, whether you are the only vegan or you are serving only vegans, everything is delicious and will aim to please your biggest game day critics. After each recipe, I will give you tips for that particular recipe so that you can make it perfect every single time. But first, I want to get into some of my ultimate game day tips for hosting and prepping everything very easily for you. Before we even get started with any of the cooking, what I like to do is write down all of the things that I'm going to make. I separate this between appetizers and main dishes, and of course that's subjective because everybody puts everything on their plate at one time, but I like to make sure that I have variety and this helps me do that. Once we have written down all the recipes that we're going to be making, what I like to do is order them by how I'm then going to prep all of them. For this particular spread, I'm making the guac first because while it's the easiest thing to make out of everything we're making, the longer you let it sit, the more those flavors come together. And so we really wanna let that sit as long as we possibly can. Otherwise, I try to base my prep order based on what takes the longest or what needs to cook the longest. My second prep or hosting tip is that I really love to write down all of my recipes on a piece of paper. I really like to do this on post-it notes because they are sticky and then I put them inside of the serving dish that they're gonna go on. This seems like such a simple tip. However, it not only ensures that I have exactly what serving dishes that I'm going to use, but it makes sure you know that you have enough serving dishes and that they are big enough for the things that you are making in order to hold everything. For my last prep tip, I really like to take all of the recipes that I am going to be making and write down the bulk ingredients that are comparable between each of them. So if I need three onions between my seven recipes, I'll write down three onions, go on as far as like peppers and anything else that you need to cut and then prep those all at one time. This saves you a lot of time when it comes to each recipe. I also do things when I'm making big batches for holidays or game days like this is I will open all of my cans, I will get all of my spices together for each individual recipe. And speaking of each individual recipe, if you have enough space in your kitchen, what I also find really helpful is if you put all the ingredients for each dish together, anything that is frozen or needs to stay refrigerated, I will leave in the freezer or the fridge. However, anything that can stay out, like your spices or your produce or anything like that, make sure that they are all together and this just saves you a lot of time in the long run that everything is together. Now that you have all my tips for success, let's get into these seven recipes. Guac is a pretty straightforward dish, so it is the simplest one that we are going to be making. It's pretty standard, the ingredients, though we are basing this off of a copycat chipotle recipe. You can mash your avocado as smooth or as chunky as you would like to keep it. And then if you wanna increase or decrease the spice level, you can do that very easily with adding more or less of the fresh jalapeno. The biggest tip here is that with the fresh garlic, like it can get spicy. That's why we only do one clove, although we are extreme garlic lovers. If you are only doing fresh garlic and it's not gonna be cooked, we don't recommend going above two cloves of garlic. As far as the plastic wrap, we are adding that right to the guacamole on top because it helps prevent that browning that sometimes you get on top. If you forget this step and just throw it into your fridge with a covered lid and then you open it a few hours later and notice that there's some browning, just stir it together and everything will be completely okay. For this tater tot casserole, what we did was use a 12 inch cast iron skillet. We are doing that because we can saute everything right into the skillet. It's large enough to hold everything and then it can go straight into the oven. No worries if you don't have one that is this big. What you can do is after you're done sauteing, put everything into a casserole dish that is a nine by 13 size and then finish your dish and then it can go right into the oven. We are using a Yves pepperoni. It is a vegan pepperoni for this recipe. We do prefer the field roast, but I couldn't find it even though I went to a few stores that usually carry it. So you can use either or you don't have to use that at all. You can use other toppings. Feel free to get creative with this recipe. You could add in your favorite pizza toppings, maybe throw some mushrooms in while you are sauteing or add them on the other end, like add some fresh onions or any of your other favorite pizza toppings on top of this maybe even some pineapple. Also, we have a Tex-Mex tater tot casserole. If you would prefer that version instead, I will link that in the description box. This cauliflower taco casserole is actually one of our favorite dinners that we make in our home, but it also pairs perfectly for a game day spread. 
I only use beans. I use two different kinds, black and pinto for this recipe. You can get creative and swap those up. You can also use a vegan meat crumble if you would prefer that inside of this recipe as well. This recipe is great served on its own or you can serve it with tortilla chips or flour or corn tortillas as well to make some tacos on the side if you think that your guests would prefer something like that. We have a few egg roll options on our website and even some dessert ones, but these Southwest chicken egg rolls are one of our absolute favorites. I used to get this as an appetizer before I went vegan at Chili's and I had to recreate them when it came to a game day spread. I'm using Darren vegan chicken inside of this recipe, but I have also used the Gardein strips what I found when using the daring ones is that they were harder to chop up. However, I did like the flavor and the texture inside of them. For our gluten-free friends, if you can't do egg roll wrappers, then what you could do is put some of that mixture inside of a corn tortilla, roll it up, and then you can just bake them the same way, whether you want to deep fry them a little bit or you want to air fry like we did in this recipe. These ham and cheese sliders are another recipe that I used to make pre being vegan and then I had to convert them for a game day spread. It is super easy to get creative with this recipe. You can use regular yeasted rolls, you can use the Hawaiian rolls, any rolls that you have that are vegan can be used for this recipe. We even have a recipe on our website for making homemade slider buns if you would prefer to DIY them. As far as getting creative, you can switch up the cheese options, you can switch up the vegan deli meat, you can even switch switch up the topping that goes on the top of these for the sauce. We have done this with teriyaki or barbecue sauce, other types of sauces. Feel free to get as creative as your heart desires for this recipe. We also have a pizza option slider that we will link in the description box if you would prefer something like those. You could even mix and match them and do half of the ham and cheese and half of the pizza ones and you will please everyone that you serve, especially the kids with this recipe. These meatballs might seem like the weirdest combination if you've never had this type of recipe, especially prior to going vegan. However, I promise that somehow the savoriness of the chili sauce and the sweetness of the grape jelly just go perfectly together to make an ultimate sauce for these meatballs. The biggest tip here is that if you made this recipe prior to going vegan, you typically use frozen meatballs, you throw them in the crock pot with the sauce and you can let it go for hours and it will be completely fine. You can't do that with vegan meatballs. They tend to break down a lot faster and they also tend to just crumble if you leave them for hours. So what you wanna do is mix your sauce. You can even let your sauce go for an hour or two and get really nice and bubbly and then add your frozen meatballs. But what you wanna do is make sure that you don't cook this longer than an hour. You can turn on your warming option or completely turn it off and wait until your guests are about to arrive and then turn it back on, but do not overcook these meatballs inside of your crock pot. As far as the Rotel dip, it is our last recipe that we are making, but it is also one of my absolute favorite dishes. So as far as the cheese sauce goes, it is incredible on its own. You don't even need to add anything else to it. Dip all of your chips inside of it. Hold the whole blender to yourself and don't share it. It is that good if you have never made it before. But we do like the addition of the Rotel and the sausage crumbles. If you aren't a vegan sausage fan, then feel free to use a beef crumble or just don't add that part at all. As far as the Rotel, you really wanna be careful about which can you pick as they have different uh, spicy levels. So there's a mild and a hot and then an original. So make sure that you get which one that your family would actually prefer. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this made your game day as easy and as successful as possible. If you make any of these dishes, feel free to share a photo and tag us on Instagram or even our Facebook page. And of course, those are both at Make It Dairy Free also. I know it's been a long time since I've made a recipe video, especially those that have, have been with us for a very long time, but I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helps you and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much and have a wonderful week. Bye.